All right. So in this case, we want to consider this revision exercise that is determining uh, the room, uh, still working with our flow diagrams. Remember, we worked uh, with finding of the output values given the input. We worked with the determining of the input given output values. Now you do not have the rule in this case, and they want you to determine it. All right. So as you are working with the finding or determining of the room, what is important for you to figure out is the output. Remember, the output is written in terms of the rule. Remember that that is the concept, what we had before. Y is equal to the rule. So if Y is equal to the rule, we have to figure out how that rule is given as Y is the output. So how is that given? Y is equal to the value that is going to affect the input. Remember, we have got uh, our input, which is X. Remember, the input is X. So we've got the value that is going to multiply X, which is the, the difference. And you must add or subtract a constant that is going to be, let's just call it C. All right. So since we are used to these guys, we remember equation of a straight line. Remember when you are working with a straight line, you work with this concept of Y is equal to MX plus C, which is the equation of a straight line. So we want to take this M here. This is the difference that we are talking about, the constant difference. There is a constant difference that we are going to have. So with that, we can write whatever that we can have. We must determine the constant difference, then we have to determine the value of C. So just like in your normal, when you're dealing with an equation, M is the value to be calculated, and also C is the value to be calculated this one. You have to calculate this. So the question is, how are you going to determine the constant difference? You determine this, from the output values, from the output. Okay, what am I trying to say? Let's consider question number one. All right, on question number one, these are the input values. Do not worry about that. You focus on the output. So the output is 4, 9, 14, 19, and so on. So check, is there a constant difference? Just like what you're doing, those number pairs, when you're dealing with the number patterns, okay? Remember your grade eight number patterns. Consider, is there a difference that is between, these are like terms. The first one, as you can see, this is one, two. So it's like you have first term, second term. It's four, five, and so on. I mean, uh, four, nine, 14, and so on. So what is the difference between those two? You subtract nine, minus this four. So it's like you're having four, nine, 14, 19, like this. The difference between these two, just like the number pattern, nine minus four, which is a five. 14 minus nine, a five. 19 minus 14, a five. There's a difference, constant difference of a five. So this is the way, nine minus four, which is simply a five. This one minus this one, a five. You can simply see it on the table there. So there is a constant difference of a five. So meaning to say we can write this as y is equal to the constant difference that we need here, which is five. So that is five X plus a C. Some textbooks, they use a B. Some they use uh, this as y is equal to AX plus B. Y is equal to PX plus Q. It depends with the textbook that you are using there. So this C is the value to be calculated. So the question is, how are you going to determine this? Since we have Y and X, and there is one unknown. So remember, this is a value to be calculated. So X and Y can be taken from our table. We can have it from there. 
When x is 1, it means y is 4. When x is 2, it means y is 9. When x is 3, it means y. That is what it means there. If it means that, that when x is equal to 1, y is equal to the output, which is 4. If it means this, therefore, let, let us just substitute that condition. In place of y, we substitute a 4. So that is 4 is equal to, in place of x, that is 5 times 1 plus a c. So as you can see, we have to find or solve for c. It's an equation. 5 times 1, that's 5. So 4 is equal to 5 plus c. You can take this 5 to the other side. Uh, that will be a minus. So 4 minus 5 is minus 1. So we need to say minus 1 is equal to c. So if c is equal to minus 1, therefore we can have this as the rule, which is y is equal to, remember here, 5x plus c. So we have got this part, 5x plus our c is minus 1. So it's plus minus 1 like this, which is going to give us a minus 1. So we have the rule now. Y is equal to, remember, Y is equal to what? The rule. So meaning to say the rule that we are going to have is simply this part of what? 5X minus 1. So this here is supposed to be given as 5X minus 1. For every value of x that you substitute, you must get this. If x is 2, you substitute 2, you must get a 9. If x is 3, you substitute 3, you must get a 14. So you just have to find the difference. y is equal to the constant difference times x plus the c. Where this is the constant difference between that you have to determine from what you are given. So you can actually do the same thing. On question number 2, if you are to consider question number 2, from, remember I said, from the output. So these are the output from 9, 11, 13. Is there a constant difference? 11 minus 9, that's a 2. 13 minus 11, that's a 2. This might, as, as, you, as the two numbers, they just give you the same. That's the constant difference. So as you can see, there's 2, 2, 2, 2, and so on. So meaning to say, we can take this into consideration. Y is equal to, the constant difference, which can be written as m, is up to you, which is 2. So that is going to be 2x plus a c. You calculate c by using any combination from the input to the output. When x is 2, y is what? Is 9. So with this, we can substitute 9 in place of y, but x is what? x is 2. So that is 2 times 2 plus a c. So you can take any. You can use the 3 versus 11, you can use 4 versus any part that you want. You are going to obtain same value of x. So I want you to try with whatever value that you want. You are going to obtain the same. You can use 5 and 15. When x is 5, y is 15. It's up to you. You obtain the same value of c. All right. So 9 is equal to 2 times 2, which is 4 plus c. Take this to the other side. Uh, that was going to be a minus. Remember, that's a plus. Uh, this plus 4. So if you take this to the other side, it will be a minus 9 minus 4, which is 5. So simply means C is equal to 5. So therefore, we are going to have Y as equal to this part as it was, which is 2X plus C. And our C is what is 5. You just have to substitute the C that you calculated in place of C. So meaning to say, if Y is equal to the rule, this here is the rule which is our 2x plus 5. So this was simply going to be 2x plus a 5. Just like that. So this is what you're going to do throughout. Just have to find the difference from the y values. There is a difference that you're going to have. On the other part, we have got 3, 6, 9, 12, or number 3. These are the differences. I mean, these are the y values. So from the y values, let's find the differences. 6. All right. 6 minus uh, 3, that's a 3. 9 minus 6, that's a 3. 12 minus 9, that's a 3. So you can see we have a difference of 3, 3, 3, 3, and so on. So meaning to say y is equal to the constant difference times x. So the constant difference is 3. So that is 3x plus c. We have to find this c by using any combination. So you can even use the first one. If the input 
x is 3, the output is also a 3. So output, that is the y value, x input. So y is 3, y there, y is 3. So in place of y, we're going to substitute a 3, which is equal to 3 times x. x is 3 in that combination, this one. When y is 3, x is 3. So you substitute a 3, plus a c. Let's calculate c. 3 is equal to 3 times 3, which is 9, plus a c. Take this 9 to the other side. It becomes a minus. So that is 3 minus 9, which is minus 6, is equal to c. So if c is minus 6, therefore, our equation is given as 3x plus c, which is minus 6, plus minus 6. So it's going to be a minus 6, which is the rule that we need. So that's 3x minus 6. So with this rule, you can substitute these and obtain exactly what we are having on the output. So that's how you simply work these questions, guys. Question number four, you can do the same thing. Uh, substitute, I mean, find the difference, which is the constant difference. Is there a constant difference between these two? There's a difference of nine. Between these two, 28 minus 19, there's a difference of nine and so on. So, so you can see that there's a difference of nine. So meaning to say, we can use the concept y is equal to the constant difference of nine times x plus c. So you must find c from any combination. If x is two, y is equal to nine from the correct, just use any. So this is your x, this is your y. Y is what? Y is 10. So y is 10 when x is what? When x is two. So that's nine times two plus a c. So 10 is equal to nine times two, which is 18 plus c. We can solve for c. Take this to the other side. 10 minus 18 is equal to minus eight. So that's minus 8 is equal to C, meaning to say Y can be written as 9X plus C, which is 9X plus minus 8, which is minus 8. Just like that. So we've got the rule there, 9X minus 8. So this is what you are going to do throughout these questions uh, that we are seeing. So on question number 5, we still have the same thing. The difference here, there's a difference uh, 14 minus 6. The second one minus the first one. So it's 14 minus 16, sorry, 14 minus 16. There's a difference of minus 2. 12 minus 14, there's a difference of minus 2. But if you check the other one, 4 minus 12, there's a difference there of minus 8. It is because these input, if you check, it's minus 3, minus 3, minus 2, minus 1. What are you supposed to have? You are supposed to have 0, 1, two, three. So they skipped zero, one, two. So that's why this difference is going to give us a negative eight. So do not consider this part here uh, as determine the difference. As long as these two, they have got a difference, which is the same. That is to show you that there is a constant difference and you are still going to obtain the same rule, which is going to satisfy even that last part that you had. So do not worry about that. So there is a constant difference there of minus two. So from that consideration, we said y is equal to the constant difference, which is minus two. So that's minus two x plus c. So use any combination that you want to determine the value of c. So you can use when x is minus three, what is the output? The output is 16. So this is x and the output is y. So y is 16 if x is what? if x is minus three. So that is the consideration. x there is a minus three. That's minus three, minus two, minus one. And the other one was a positive three. So in this case, we can solve for c. 16 is equal to negative two times negative three. That's a positive six plus c. Take this to the other side. Uh, that will be a negative of 16 minus six, which is a 10. So there we've got the c, uh, which is 10. So we can substitute this value of c where the C is having our equation uh, of Y, which is equal to minus 2X plus a 10. So thus, we have got the rule in this case. Minus 2X plus what? Minus 2X plus 10. So this is what you're going to have here. Minus 2X plus a 10. Guys, you are going to have this a repetition throughout and throughout. The same sense here, you subtract. All right? On the output, you work with the output. These are the numbers on the output. Second one, 
minus the first one. So it's minus 8 minus minus 5 like this. Minus 8 minus minus 5. That is going to be a plus, which is minus 3. Minus 8 plus 5, that's minus 3. The same way, minus 11 minus minus 8. So it's minus 11 minus minus 8 like this, which is a plus, And that is going to be minus 3. So as long as these two are the same, guys, there is a minus 3 here. There's, it, it means there's a constant difference of minus 3. Do not worry about what is going to follow there. So that's a minus 3 there. So meaning to say, uh, on number 6, we are going to have this as y is equal to the constant difference times x plus c, where we can determine the c by using any combination. So using the first one where x is minus 2, y is equal to minus 5. So this is minus 2, minus 3, minus 4, minus 10. So y is what? Minus 5. y is minus 5. When x is what? When x is minus 2. That's an equation. So for C, so minus 5 is equal to minus and minus, that's a plus 6 plus C. So take this to the other side, it becomes a minus. So that's minus 5 minus 6, minus 5 minus 6, that's minus 11, which is equal to C. So meaning to say Y is equal to minus 3X plus a minus C, which is minus 11. So that is, we have got the rule. Uh, in this case, minus 3x minus 11. Just like that. So this is what you are having. And it can be from a table like this. What is the difference? There's no difference. There's no difference as what you are having before here. There's no difference. There's no difference at all. You are opting from the output. This is the y. Output, isn't it, that you're having here? The output is the one that you're working with. So it's the same thing, even though you're working from a table. So you determine from the output, constant difference. The difference, minus 2, minus, minus 4. So it's minus 2, minus, minus 4, which is a plus. So minus 2 plus 4, that's a 2. So there's a difference of 2. 0 minus, minus 2. So that's, that's 0 minus, minus 2, which is a plus. 0 plus 2, that's a 2. 2 minus 0, that's a 2. Guys, there's a difference of 2 throughout. So meaning to say that's a linear that we are going to have of y is equal to the difference, the constant difference times x plus c. To determine the value of c, you are taking a combination of the input versus output, x versus y. Remember the input, this is x, this is y. So if you take this part here, you are indicating that y is minus 4, where x at that moment is minus 1. So you can take any part, any, using that way. So y is minus 4, x is minus 1. So what is the value of c? Minus 4 is equal to 2 times minus 1, which is minus 2 plus c. Uh, take the minus 2 this side, it becomes a plus. So minus 4 plus 2. The same as 2 minus 4, which is minus 2, or just minus 4 plus 2 on your calculator, that's minus 2, which is equal to C. So if C is minus 2, therefore Y is equal to what? 2X plus C, which is 2X plus minus 2. So that's simply a minus 2. So this is what we are going to have as the rule which connects the output and the input, the output, y, to the input, x. That's the rule. So I do not know, guys, from this. Um, you just need to revise as many question papers as you can. Uh, that is the major part that you need from now. Work with more question papers. Revise as many as you can uh, so that you prepare yourselves for the exams that are ahead of time. Make sure that you know the basics and also do revise question papers. Uh, work through your exam questions so that you do understand how are they going to ask questions uh, about the flow diagrams. And in most cases, they are going to include equations in pa as part of your flow diagrams or the part of the straight lines. So we shall compile also question papers so that we work those question papers together. Uh, so do yourself a favor, revise as much as you can. That's it, guys.
till we meet again.